Hey guys, welcome to The Art of Comics. I'm your host, Andres Salazar. Today we're gonna do something a little special, a little different. Uh, I'm not gonna review or kinda do a deep dive on a comic book. I'm gonna talk about my book that I'm working on. And we're gonna do a deep dive a little bit on the process that I've been working on. Uh, Shangri-La Estates. I might just call it Shangri-La. It's gonna be a graphic novel, probably 200 or so pages long. It is the um, Southern Fried uh, coming of age story of a small family that transplant themselves to Little Rock, Arkansas in the 80s. After divorce, the little family of a mother and a boy are picking up the pieces and trying to come to grips with living in a new place in the 80s. So uh, it's got that coming of age story. It's kind of a you know, uh, Richard Linkletter type of film, like Boyhood, something like that, or Blankets, you know, that graphic novel by Craig Thompson. It's got that kind of a vibe to it. Um, and I've been doing a lot of research for a while now, and I've got 50 pages here. Uh, I think I'm up to like 60 pages, actually, of the book, of, of like the first draft, with lettering and coloring everything. And I'm going to share it with you and show you my marks and what I'm doing and just to kind of like see a little bit about the process of how I did it. So um, this is really the big project I've started doing after uh, Pariah, Missouri, after those three graphic novels have been finished. And I really wanted to kind of not do a Western, but do something a little bit more, um, more reality based and something like that. So this is definitely more of an indie thing but I think it's pretty fun. So let's go ahead and dive down into the pages and I'll talk a little bit about my process and what I'm doing. Let's do it. Okay, here we go, Shangri-La. Hey guys, thanks for watching again. Appreciate you guys supporting the uh, channel and watching these videos. I'm not talking about published works. I'm talking about my book that I'm working on right now. And what I'm showing you is my redlined kind of notes and comments of this first draft of the graphic novel. Now, I'm doing this slightly backwards in that, you know, really you should have your script completely finished, the whole thing done, and then start working on pages and all that so you don't have to redraw. Because drawing is where all the work really is, all the time is going into, and especially coloring. Normally you definitely would not color this before doing this, but I said, screw it, I'm doing things a little backwards. And perhaps this is a little bit longer, but I wanted to make comments on the colors as well and everything. I really want this to sing, and so I, uh, I made, I'm making changes now. So take a look and check out what's going on. So this is Shangri-La, this is page one. And what I did was, um, so the majority of the art here was done on original paper on boards. I then scan that in. I then digitally maybe make some corrections and changes and then I digitally put the colors and I digitally do the the word balloons in InDesign and then I printed this out just as a PDF on an inkjet printer, not inkjet, on a laser printer and now I'm going through it all and I made, made marks and comments and things like that for kind of version changes, right? So there's art changes, there's dialogue changes, there's positioning, all that. So what I did was I made, I did these 50 pages, I put them in a drawer, and I recommend this for everybody. This is like screenwriting 101 thing. Put it in a drawer, let it just sit, kind of divorce yourself from the project for a little bit, and then with some fresh eyes, you can kind of look at it again. You can kind of see it and read it almost like the first time. Uh, you need that little bit of distance between going through your first draft and writing it and rewriting. You need that little bit of time, that little space to kind of get your mind kind of fresh. So that's what I did. And I um, took a couple weeks off from the book, worked on Boaz, this other book I was doing, and the Cannibals on Mars. Uh, short story and so while I was doing that I let this marinate and then now came back to it. So uh, just a couple changes. Uh, one of the things is I actually took some more photography. I did some um, more reference photos for this because I didn't really like the positioning of this 
and, nor this. So I actually had my wife uh, in the kitchen <laughs> do some stuff. And so I got up on a stool and kind of took this shot of her coming, you know, trying to grab this thing. And so I, I did some more photo references. So these are going to get redrawn. I'm going to add some more boxes because I kind of felt like this, um, this scene where we have um, them packing up just didn't have enough like chaos. So I'm putting more boxes, things like that. Changing the dialogue here. I didn't really care for this word balloon. It needs to be more dynamic, I say. And then I want to say like Andy, Andy, you know, just kind of just emphasize it a little bit more. Also, the coloring here is a little off. It's a little too dark. Some of this because of the printing, but I just, I felt like this is a little too peachy. Uh, we're gonna change that, make that bigger, you know, put, instead of just put 1981, we're gonna put the year as 1981. Little things like that, fix the hand. So a lot of little images. So this is page one, you know, we flip it over to two. Now two and three actually work like this. And uh, two and three, are both nine pedal grids and they're gonna go across like this. And it's it's going between two scenes. One is the travel across country from California to Arkansas. And the other interspersed scene is this battle or fight that Andy goes through with this kid named Jerry Jr. Um, at, the, at the tree house. So there's the travel there's the treehouse scenes, which are kind of in this red. And the, on top of that is the lyrics to Another One Bites the Dust by Queen. So um, I'm not quite sure on all the legalities of that. I'm trying to figure out, but I've, I've read other comics that have a good amount of the lyrics. I think I'll be okay with using some of it. I'm not using all of it, but I might have to just double check to see uh, there's going to be issues with that, but I really kind of wanted music and the, the music of the 80s to be part of this because um, music is everywhere, and especially back then, I felt like it'd be good to, to really sync it in that time. So, you know, are you ready? Are you ready for this? Another one bites the dust, you know, as the fist comes, you know, that kind of stuff. Uh, a couple changes here. We're gonna zoom this in because I feel like there's a lot of dead space here. So we're gonna zoom in. Uh, Sarah, that's the mother. We're gonna change this to make sure this is clear, the school. So we're gonna put the sign of the elementary school. Uh, this is actually pretty good. There's a couple little changes too. I wanna put windmill, the little wind power uh, propeller things out there to kind of really show that and a couple other things. Other than that, I'm fine with these two. The next one is, I'll flip it this way. The next one is this one. Um, not too many changes. This again is continuing the travel to get to the trailer park, the trailer park called Shangri-La Estates. Oh, I'm gonna redo this drawing because this doesn't really, this doesn't really show that he's at their knees. So by doing this this way, I think we really emphasize that Andy is on his knees in front of them who are standing, right? And we might even put another person here. This, I don't feel it really shows well. I might even change this laughter to white. So maybe I'll add that actually white. White letters. So we might do that as well. So I kind of like that panel. It kind of works out kind of cool. And this is fine. This is a cool G.I. Joe thing. I'm tempted to even do another page just to really extend that travel. Uh, okay, and then here's kind of a nice um, splash page of the place. And then, you know, I never drew the, the van, so we're gonna put that in. Other than that, I think we're gonna change some of the trees. We're gonna add some more trees and like uh, telephone lines, things like that. So we'll add some telephone lines and kind of really get that kind of look to it. So we'll do that as well, but not too, too many changes. Here's another double spread. I don't think I had any changes on this. This is fine. I'm, I probably need to fix this here and kind of like clean this up just a little bit. But other than that, I'm happy with, with this little like uh, view of the, the trailer. So this was, this actually turned out kind of cool. I'm happy with the colors too. I think this is just like pretty much good to go. Every now and then I got something working. And now we're fully on that scene of at the trailer 
it's not trailer, but the, um, the, uh, at the clubhouse. So these were some of the older boys. Um, what did I say here? We're going to change this. Yeah. Oh, we're going to move this dialogue here. Um, cause that wasn't working. I got to open this mouth cause he's just smiling. He needs to be mad. So they all need to be kind of yelling at him. This needs to get bigger. So just small little things. I'm basically just going through the story. The colors are fine. I actually like the colors on this page, but some of these I'm definitely going to change. Um, what do I say here? See, the problem is I wrote this a while ago. Oh, he's yelling shit. That's what he's saying. Ah, shit. Um, so there are some dialogue changes. And this just happens, you know, as you go through. Yeah, I got to show a little bit more, like, expression, right? It's like... It's just kind of still, there's no acting there. So I need to put a little bit more acting in there and show some more emotions. Here's another page. Now we're, now we're kind of like in reality. I'm gonna change this, give this more of a surprise look. Oh, and I was even thinking about maybe changing the, these panels here. So instead of this panel, really showing these couple panels of the hand grabbing, the knob, the doorknob, the turning of the doorknob to opening up uh, Mrs. Uh, Clay, who, who Mrs. Clay is, is this chick here. So so we're gonna probably do that. So we're gonna change this, this construction a bit. And I actually, I'm gonna put a later here to show this is a different time. Um, so we'll put some, some of that kind of thing to fix these eyes. I don't know why I say how to fix them, but I'm fixing them for some reason. Um, bigger expression. So yeah, bold. Yeah. Also, I didn't put all the bolding, and so I'm gonna make sure I kind of bold out some of those things here. Small dialogue changes. But this one actually worked out pretty good. This is kind of just a fun process to kind of look at it again and get another once over. And really, what I need to do. And comment below if you're an editor or you want to edit or you want to help throw out throw out some some ideas for this. Please let me know. I would totally be open for uh, people to, you know, pitch in. I'll put you down as an editor. Maybe if we need to, we could talk some finances. But, um, yeah, I'm looking for editors. I definitely feel I need one. It's always good to have one to kind of just make it even better. So I need to do that, actually. I need to find an editor. Maybe after this version, after I make all these corrections, I'll definitely need to get one together. To, to take a look, so I gotta do that. Um, I don't know what that is right there, but yeah, I'm just talking about ex fixing some of the expressions, you know, acting, you know, drawing acting and, and, ex and expressions is so critical in comics, and sometimes I'll do it, and I'm like, now, later, I'm like, oh, really, does that make sense, this expression here? She needs to be smiling and stuff. Uh, I really like that for some reason. That, this really kicks, this cracks me up. And I like this too. I've seen it fix a couple of these faces uh, that, I'm, that I say. So sometimes, you know, when you take a step back after a couple of weeks, you go back, you're like, oh, I don't know if that works. Like this doesn't really work either. And I say fix it. I'm trying to make him be kind of funny and silly, but it's not quite working. So I got to fix that. I got to fix that. There's these little like visual things. And then a couple of more dialogue pieces that kind of make a little bit more sense. Now we're switching up. Oh, did I skip a page? I did. So now, now Sarah's at her job at the Texaco gas station. And uh, not too many changes, just a few things here. I actually kind of like this little scene. This has definitely got to go, though. This is just, just drives me crazy. This is horrible. I am going to fix it. I don't know if it's going to look like that necessarily, but I got to fix that because that's just driving me batty. The bad art here. And then we're going to make this some motion there. A couple other things. This is okay. I'm not in love with it. I might actually make this bigger. So just kind of a way to like... Pr also, I think that printing it out helps versus just... Um, doing it digitally, I think you, for me at least, I need to have it in paper. I need to like flip it. I need to make notes on it. I got to see how it's going to look in theory, right? Now this is again done by a laser printer. It's not at 
300 DPI. It's just kind of a just a, a quick version. So I would want to get like you know a real more uh, with higher fidelity and resolution later. But for now, this kind of works and it allows me to kind of take my notes. Yeah, this is a uh, some lyrics I'm going to be doing. This still needs some work. I mean, you can tell the coloring's not there. I gotta fix this. You know, I gotta change, I gotta move that. I don't know why in the hell I put that dialogue. Why did I put that balloon right in front of her face? You know, things like that. I just gotta fix up. Fix her hair. I actually like this little scene here. We just gotta change a few things. I'm gonna put some dialogue here. Daddy, oh shit, you know? too thick of a line. Yeah, so yeah, I'm talking about the shadow here. Do we even need that there? Maybe we don't even need that line there. Just kinda like play around. There's some more dialogue. I actually kinda like that that image too. So, some of this stuff actually turned out pretty cool. That's really dark. I think it'd be fine in the comic, but it's really dark there. Maybe I should lighten it up. I don't know, maybe I will. I kinda like this panel too down there. Yeah, there's a lot of dialogue here that I need to just change up. So, and the sizing, I'm gonna change up the sizes of these panels down here. This is after the fight, the babysitter. And this is like a bunch of dialogue I need to add. So I put some up here, but I'm not really happy with this little scene. This is after she beat up the, the babysitter. Like, what is she gonna be doing? This needs to really get fixed. I wanna just redraw this whole thing. So, we gotta fix this one big time. Um, yeah, I gotta fix this one. This one's kind of gnarly. I like some of it though. There's some moments that are decent. Yeah, but I fix that. You gotta remove those stars, the cheesy stars, but I do kinda like this. Oh, and I've gotta make her hair curly like the rest of it, yeah. So, kinda of fun. Enough. And then now we see it's a, it was a dream, of course, and so that's her. I like this scene, I just like this a lot. Um, I gotta fix the colors though, cause I don't, we gotta change colors here, we gotta change. They both can't be the same, so I gotta put that down. Can't be the same colors and this. Can't be the same colors. Can't be the same colors. Could be something different. And now this is Andy going to his new babysitter, Mama Ha. Uh, I like these actually, I kinda like this. This is fun. And then here's his dream of G.I. Joe. And some of this stuff I like, some of this I'm gonna change. Some of the stuff, yeah, I gotta, I gotta work that out. And this is him watching TV, watching some wrestling. I like this page a lot, actually. This is kind of fun. The kids, not, not too many changes, just a few things. I gotta fix the coloring on this. So some of these are pretty rough. I like this though, it's kind of fun. Um, yeah, so this is kind of just a fun way to go through the book, make sure that it's somewhat the way you want it, you know, and then make your corrections and then do next round, right? And just, uh, I'm fine with this kind of, it's going to take longer, but it's just more of an iterative process of refining and refining it until you get it to where you like it, right? Or you love it. So that's my little look at Shangri-La Estates. Coming to you, hopefully, uh, when will it be? 2021, next year, if knock on wood, if I can make it, so we'll hope so. Thanks a lot for watching, you guys. I got a lot more videos coming up. We're gonna be doing some Alex Toth, a bunch of stuff. So thanks for watching. And uh, if you wanna see more of this specifically, and you know, actually have copies of this stuff, it's all on my Patreon. So on my Patreon, that's what my Patreon's all about, is my own stuff, so my little daily comic strips, this, uh, Cannibals on Mars, 
Calexico, Nagual, Boaz, like all these other short stories I'm working on, that's all on Patreon. So take a look, it's a buck a month, or check out the free stuff, tons of free stuff. Anyway, thanks a lot guys, have a good one.